When Man City lost 5-2 to Leicester early on in the season, many pundits thought that the end of Guardiola's reign at City was nigh and a revolution needed to occur at the Etihad for them to return to the upper echelon of English football. A brief look at their lineup that day highlights the fact that there was an inexperienced centre back pairing at the back for City, and in addition to that, there was the aging legs of Fernandinho in midfield. The next major flashpoint for City was their 2 0 loss against Tottenham, where Guardiola's team lost to a Jose Mourinho side, which seemed to indicate that the Spaniard was past it and that the arch pragmatist Mourinho had rediscovered his Midas touch and was set to reclaim his former glory. Now, a brief look at that lineup, and we see the presence of the outcast Emmerich Laporte, who was still very early into Ruben Diaz's City career, and we see bit part player Ferran Torres starting and an imbalanced midfield of KDB, Bernardo Silva ahead of Rodrigo, thus leaving Man City open to the counter attacking midfield drives of Andombele and Sissoko. Now, at that stage of the season, City's chances of winning the league had seemingly been written off, and they were languishing in 13th in the table. Since that defeat in November, Man City have gone on an unbeaten run and are sitting pretty at the top of the table. So how did Pep City go under the radar and what tactics and strategies or personnel changes have helped them to turn around their season? Now before I go further into the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for new content coming every week. Now, key turning point one was the dropping of Laporte for Stones. This sent a psychological message to the side that even if you are or were considered a pillar of the side, if your levels have dropped, you're going to be binned. Now, this is a principle which Jurgen Klopp has struggled to enforce in his side, and it's one which is key to re-energising a squad in need of motivation and used or accustomed to high levels of success. This new partnership of Stones and Diaz has been the rock upon which City's run has been built. Turning point two was the restoration of Gundogan in the midfield and his own evolution in terms of his physical state. He's moving better than at any stage of his City career, rediscovering his mobility that had deserted him since his back injury at Dortmund. And now this newfound unison of mind and body is allowing him to play with verve in possession, get goals and assists, and he's replaced David Silva's ability to control and create. Turning point three was the increased playing time of Phil Foden down the left. The young man has finally become a key part of the starting lineup and given substantial and meaningful playing time. All of Pep's players, apart from KDB, are still prone to rotation, but there's definitely been a stepping up in terms of respect and appreciation by Pep of the young Englishman and he's delivered some key goals and given them some thrust down the left-hand side of the pitch. Turning point four has been the removal of the liability Benjamin Mendy from the starting lineup and the acknowledgement that Cancelo is without a shadow of a doubt their best fullback period. Now there is rotation in these fullback areas. You see Zinchenko coming in from time to time, but Cancelo when fit, he's a vital player both defensively and in terms of build-up play both in terms of the overlaps he provides and in terms of the underlaps drifting in and assisting with the build-up in the half spaces. Turning point five has been the use of Sterling as a false nine and just generally getting to grips with the fact that Sterling's mental state has changed. He, he's slightly lacking in motivation to play out wide, but what Guardiola has done with him is rotate him occasionally, but also use him centrally. And by doing this, he's extracting some value from the Englishman who's going through a transitional period in his game and he's slowly coming into form. From a philosophical standpoint, there's also been some fundamental changes carried out by Guardiola. Gone are the days of the incredibly aggressive press, game after game, minute after minute. And now City are happier at times to play a more measured game with their press per defensive action now ranging between 8 to 11 in most games. Whereas if you look at the games against Leicester and Spurs, their pressing per defensive action was in the region of six, which is more accustomed to what we're seeing from City historically. Now, with Ruben Diaz now comfortable at all types of defending, arguably not super uh, efficient or effective at 1v1 defending, and the fullbacks becoming very solid defensively, City have become very difficult to break down. It's kind of hard to find a weak link at the back and they don't panic now if they're not controlling a phase of the game. Furthermore, the defence now has two screening midfielders in front of it in Gundogan 
and Rodri. This is a shift from the two advanced eights strategy that we're used to seeing from Pep when he had David Silva and De Bruyne and their prime playing. They're now a pure 4 2 3 1 outfit, albeit when Foden's playing, it can be a lopsided 4 3 2 1 or 4 5 1, or even at times a 4 2 2 2 or a 4 4 2. It's a fluid system in the forward areas. Gundogan does have the opportunity to break between enemy lines, but the difference to his role compared to a David Silva is that there isn't the same expectation on him to constantly bomb forward throughout the game, more that he has to pick and choose his moments wisely. Now, players such as Bernardo Silva and Jesus have key roles to play in the run-in, as they give Pep options to turn up the dial in terms of creativity and penetration, and Pep's been using them both really well. When you consider how dangerous Jesus has looked in front of goal recently and compare it to someone like Firmino, it just goes to show how important it is that when a team is in danger of overplaying and being too dominant in games and, and that leads to the tempo becoming too slow, you need a goal scorer up top who can convert that possession into genuinely effective outcomes. Now, in conclusion, City, despite an inauspicious start, have made themselves favourite for the league and whilst Pep has often been criticised for being a checkbook manager or relying on the elite quality of his squad, this season more than any other has challenged both his man management skills, his powers of psychology and his tactical skills as he squeezes performances week after week with his current City squad. It's by no means his best ever side but it's deservedly earning plaudits for its efficiency, versatility and attention to the small details. Historically, especially in the Champions League, whenever Pep's tried to be pragmatic, he's cocked it up. This time he's making it work for him in the league, but it remains to be seen whether he can maintain this in the run-in and also transfer this onto the Champions League stage too. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next time. Bye.